What could jurors possibly talk about for three days? I'm glad I've got no home life. Maybe the knit and necktie for Geller this time. Not a chance with Lester Owens defending him. Say, I've got my copy written right now. Hmm, Ace Newshawk makes scoop. He isn't a Newshawk, he's a correspondent. Say, Owens is smart, all right. I don't think he's so smart. This is one case Owen will never win. Huh, that'll be news. Mister, you don't know your Owens. Owens knows his onions, all right. Well, if Geller's acquitted, there'll be a smell worse than onions in this town. The court will remain seated and come to order. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you agreed upon a verdict? No, Your Honor, we have not. Do you think there is any possibility of reaching a verdict? No, Your Honor, we are hopelessly divided. There was ample evidence in this case to justify a conviction. You listened, I presume, to the summary of that evidence. You heard the court's instructions. Yet in the face of all this, you are unable to bring in a verdict. How you can leave this courtroom and face your fellow citizens is beyond my power to understand. It is just such scandalous miscarriage of justice as this that has caused disrespect for law and order in this country. I'm going to report certain rumors in connection with this case to the grand jury of this county for investigation. The jury is discharged. The prisoner is remanded to custody. Your Honor, I move that the case against my client be dismissed. I'm sure you will agree with me that any further procedure would only result in wasting the state's money. Your Honor, the state makes a motion for a new trial of this man. We still feel that we have ample evidence for a conviction. Motion for a new trial is granted. Court adjourned. I don't like that guy. Why doesn't he let that for me? The DA? Don't mind him. You'll never stand trial again, and I'll have you out on bail in an hour. All right, Mr. Keller. Give us a gag line, Lester. Yeah, something to hang a yarn on. <laughs> Nothing hangs around here except the jury. <laughs> I leave it to you, boys. Say what you like. Yeah. You're not always going to get by with that, Owens. Well, I did get by with it. Didn't I, Ollie? You sure did, Lester. The story I'd like to write is how you got away with it. <laughs> See you back. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. We have everything ready for you. Thank you. Mr. Landers, key, please. Did you have a smooth trip? Enjoy your crossing? Oh, I had a splendid trip. Got a polo in England, mountain climbing in Switzerland. Uh, but it's a steady diet. I'll take you a hotel elevator. <laughs> Remember me? Ollie, darling, this is a pleasant surprise. Oh, Landy, where have you been? Oh, around. You got a minute to spare an ambitious reporter? Surely. I've been playing polo in England and... Oh, yeah, I know. And mountain climbing in, let's see, was it Switzerland or uh, Nebraska? What do you mean, Ollie? Oh, give in, Lanny. I know you're still in the service. Who's stealing what plans from who? Come on, now. I want an inside story. Never can fool in no day, huh? Mm-hmm. Hello. Are congratulations in order? Mm-hmm. They oh. are if, uh, you haven't lost your manners. <laughs> I want to hear that. Surely not that lawyer chap that you were running around with before I went away. Oh, that was glamour. I must admit I was a little dazzled there for a while, though. Now, Lanny, this is love. L-O-V-E. I think you've heard of it. Yes, they use it on the end of letters. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, Ollie, I'm glad for your sake. Who's the lucky man? It's Billy Westrop. I don't think you know him. Say, Lester Owens is giving a party for us at Geller's. Why don't you drop down later this evening and check up on the future husband? Geller's? It must be a new place. No, not so new. What are those semi-private clubs over on West 52nd Street? 
You know, Park Avenue comes over and rubs shoulders with the Broadway mug. <laughs> Thanks, Ellie. I'll try and make it. Well, uh, no story this time, Lenny? No, darling. And if you'll forgive me, I must be running along. All right. Go back to the room, Mr. Lambert. Oh, thank you. Well, K7 in person. John, you old bloodhound. How are you, Lanny? Say it with cigars, eh? Oh, just a little welcome home. Don't you like them? Did you buy these? Sure. And they cost me five dollars. Wait a minute. I smell something. Oh, well, well, it couldn't be the cigars. Oh, no, no, they're fine, thanks. <laughs> Sit down, Lanny, I want to talk to you. Go ahead, shoot, I can take it standing. We've got an important job. Wait a minute. You're not talking to K-7. I finished my last job. I'm retiring. <laughs> you can't retire, Lanny. I thought those cigars were loaded. No, John, I've made up my mind. I'm tired of chasing hot money around the country. I'm staying right here. <laughs> well, of course you are. Sure. But let me give you the setup. We're about to crack down on organized crime. We're going after the big shots. We're going to get at the source of this trouble. No, I think I rate a rest. Mm. Quite a lot of money, and I'd like to spend a little. Mm -hmm. Rats. You'd be sick of it in a week. You know, organized crime is taking a terrific toll in this country. It's costing millions a year. Now, such a condition couldn't exist unless... Oh, I see you have a late paper. And what do you want me to do? Catch these small-time racketeers? No, the local police will attend to that. Well, who do you want me to start on? Find the man behind Geller. Someone's financing him, that's sure. Why, well, I heard that Geller had plenty of money of his own. No, not to swing the deals he's putting over. He takes money and lots of it. Well, who's financing him? I don't know. That's why I'm putting you on the job. All right. Got any leads? You might look into this Geller jury. I'm sure it was fixed. That is, bought or intimidated. Good morning. Morning. Hell Owens Kennedy wants to see him. Sorry, he's not in. Good morning, Kennedy. Oh, good morning. Glad to see you. Come on in. What's the idea? You know what I came here for. You might have waited for the trial to blow over before you came here. Will you please tell Mr. Owens I'm here? Yes, sir. Mr. Geller to see you. Mr. Owens has to go right in. Thank you. Hello, Owens. Hello, Eddie. What does this guy want? What do you think? The payoff? A lot of crust coming up here. What do you want to see me about? $5,000. $5,000? Why, I gave you 10 grand before the trial. Hanging a jury is pretty expensive, Eddie. I'll do what I can for you, Lester. Maybe I can dig it up. Oh, you'll get it all right. See you tonight at my place. Don't let Kennedy bother you.
Is he dead, officer? Yes. His money's falling out of his pocket. Holy smoke, five hundred dollars. Does anyone know this man? Why, it's Mr. Kennedy. He lived in that house across the street. He was one of the jurors on the Geller case. The man was dead. Too bad. Uh, how about the bills? Oh, all old ones. Small denominations. We'll never be able to trace them. What happened to the other jurors? Those I looked up today were rather hard to find. Well, suppose we try another angle while the boys are trying to locate them. What about that phony nightclub of Geller's? Why, I have a date at Geller's tonight. You have? Oh, good evening, Mr. Schmidt. You'll dine first? No, I think I'll pass up to dinner. I feel lucky tonight. Stacks of blues. Five decks, yes. And am I going to take the house for a ride? Good evening, Mr. Owens. Your table is all ready for you. Thank you. Is everything all right, Mr. Owens? Could be better, Tony. Glad to see you are being taken care of. Good evening, Mr. Westlock. Oh, how are you, Mr. Geller? Thank you, quite well. Really? Aren't you enjoying yourself? Why? Yes, surely I am. Why? Well, you don't seem to look very cheerful. Oh, let him alone, Ollie. This business of getting married is very serious. Bill's just beginning to realize it. You have nothing to worry about, Billy. <laughs> We're not married yet. If he turns you down, Olive, you come to me. You two had better order your dinner and stop writing. <laughs> I'm going to marry the girl and she's going to like it. <laughs> Hello, darling. I got something to tell you. Mr. Owens was talking about backing me in a place of my own. Looks like our break. Right. And I'll come and sing for you. Or maybe you wouldn't want me to. You know better, honey. It's you and me, we're no dice. Peppy's a pretty girl, isn't she? She has a pretty voice. Uh uh, now don't tell me you haven't noticed her face. Say, Billy, you've been coming here quite a good deal of late, haven't you? Well, some, but not to look at Peppy. Well, uh. Jealous, huh? It's a good sign, Ollie, dear. <laughs> Gee, Tony. I'll be so glad to get out of here. Has Geller been getting fresh? No, no, Tony. It's, it's just that I want to change, that's all. Gee, it's getting late. I've got to go get pretty up for the customers. Mr. Geller now. You're not going higher on me, are you, kid? No, of course not, Eddie. You don't seem so glad to see me since I got... since I came back. Sure, sure I am, Eddie. Only, only... No, no, please, Mr. Geller. Please, Eddie. Don't be that way, kid. Say, what's the idea, Geller? So you are number one man here. Muscled in while I was gone, huh? You let Peppy alone, Geller. What I'll... You'll what? Will I take him? No, I'll handle him myself. Did it hurt you, hon? 
Hey, boss. When do we split the dough on that last job? We don't. Oh, no? No. There isn't any dough left. The trial took it. All of it? Gee, that's too bad, Eddie. I'm afraid the boys are going to be a little annoyed when they hear that. Let me worry about that. I would have, Eddie. You're getting hard to handle. You are not fooling me, Silky. Trying to ace me out of it, huh? You're wise. Just try it and see what happens. Eddie, you're talking out of turn. This gala's place? Uh-huh. What do you do? Me? I'm the bus boy. I clean off the tables and carry the dishes in the back. What's it to you? That's not hard work. Hey, Ed, come get the dishes off the table. All right, coming. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I want to see Mr. Gallup. This way, if you please, sir. Mr. Lander, what can I do for you? You know, Gala, you're a very, uh, well, shall I say, lucky man. Lucky? <laughs> I'm afraid I don't understand what you mean. Oh, yes, you do. Have a look at that. Federal agent, sir. Why can't you dig slay off me? You tried to get me twice. The third time may be the charm, Gala. Oh, you are just talking. My lawyer says the case will never come to trial again. You know better than that. You know you can't get around the federal government. No local politician is going to smooth this over for you. You think you're a big shot, don't you? Do you know any bigger? Several. Oh, I'm not thinking of men like you. Go on, keep talking. I'm thinking of the men higher up. The birds that make you fellas take the risks while they collect the coin. Those are the real big shots, Geller. So what? Make no mistake about it, Geller. We've got you and you're going to burn for it. You're going to take the rap alone, but if you talk... You mean if I would talk, they would change the charge to manslaughter? I'm in no position to make any... But... What is it? I'm busy. There's a squawk in the game room. They sent me for you, sir. All right, I'll come. I'll see you later, Landers. Maybe I have something to tell you. I have to think it over. Better be sensible. Luck always changes. You can't win all the time. I'll say what I think. I will scrap. Oh, Lenny, darling, what are you doing prowling around here all by yourself? Lester, this is an old, old friend, Vince Landers. Mr. Owens, Lenny. How do you do, Mr. Landers? Mr. Owens, how do you do? And this is Billy. Uh, I mean, Mr. Westbrook. How do you do, Mr. Westbrook? Very happy to know you, Pete. Thank you. Sit down, old man. See you. Thanks. That's set. Frogger is a pretzel. I beg your pardon, sir. Well, Mr. Schmidt. What seems to be the trouble? Trouble enough. Plenty of trouble. I'll lose all my money. That's the trouble. Say, Geller, something wrong with that wheel. Oh, Mr. Schmidt, you are a good sport. Sure, I'm a good sport. Well, remember, you can't win all the time. The luck always changes. Take Mr. Schmidt to the dining room and serve him a bottle of champagne with my compliments. Yes, sir. I? Famous? When you're going to marry this young person, that makes you famous. Reflected glory, eh? <laughs> That's good. I've seen that boy someplace before. It was. Ah, handsome busboy captivates journalists. Ah, uh -huh. what a headline writer you'd make. Phenomenal. <laughs> 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 Billy, I'm at the Metropole. Come over and I'll uh, tell you a few things about this young lady. Ah, uh -huh, Billy knows all about me, Lanny. I'm not such a bad press agent myself. <laughs> well, let's go and have a look at the gambleers, shall we? Yes, you're pretty lucky, I'm told. The roulette, you mean.
just a minute, Mr. Westbrook. I would like to see you in my office. All right, Gilder. Can I find places for you and your guests at the table, Miss Rowans? Just a minute, Lester. Where's Billy? Oh, he's probably stuck at one of the other tables. Relax a minute and concentrate on me. Lead on, Antonio. Yes, I got your letter, but sorry, Mr. Gelder, I, I can't meet that note now. But, Mr. Westrop, you lost that money. Supposing you had won it, would you accept my note? I don't think so. But I can't pay you now. If you give me a little time, I'll see that you get your money. Your father is a very rich man, isn't he? I'd leave my father out of this, if I were you. He wouldn't pay you anyway. Westrop, I'm going to get my money from you or your old man. You go to my father and I'll... Don't get hard, fellow. I can get just a bit harder. You owe me five grand. Five thousand dollars? Why, I only lost two. That was before you got drunk. Drunk? Let me see that note. Excuse me. She's going to sing. We must hear her. I thought when love came along, life would be one happy song. Though I was once a slave of love, I'm standing now at the grave of love. You're tired of me, your every action shows it. You're tired of me, and everybody knows it. Why try to conceal it when actions speak louder than words? When we're alone, somehow I feel you're trying to keep alive a flame that slowly dying with each kiss i feel it your actions speak louder than words happiness came happiness straight my world was made up of you then came a day happiness straight i might have known it was too good to be true it's over now and I have just discovered that love once lost can never be recovered. No, you can't stop pretending, cause actions speak louder than words. Happiness came, happiness strayed, my world was made up of you. Then came a day, Happiness straight, I might have known it was too good to be true. It's over now, and I have just discovered that love once lost can never be recovered. You can stop pretending, cause actions speak louder than words. Darling, where have you been? Nice little singer, isn't she? Mm-hmm. Wonder if you excuse me. I want to see Geller about getting some cards. Oh, that reminds me. I have to see him, too. Warm tonight, isn't it? Yes, it is. You come here often? No, I've been in Europe for about a year. I think the place was open while I was away. Sorry. Geller, I brought... Geller. He's dead, all right. Still warm and beat it. Yeah, it's rather unfortunate. Unfortunate it is for me. He owed me a $5,000 fee. Hmm. 
Perhaps we'd better call the police. I'll do it. Clark, 3111. Give me Captain Hall of the homicide. Is that you, Hall? Owen speaking. You'd better hustle right over to Geller's. Geller himself. Rubbed out. Completely erased. Okay, in his office. All right. I've been waiting to crack that place. We'll get them all sooner or later. Yeah, this time Geller won't have much to say about it. It's all yours, Hall. It is, Eddie. Is he dead? Completely. Oh, Tony. Silky, what is that guy? I saw him five minutes ago. Silky? Silky Samuels? Is he tied into this? Go and pick him up, Hogan. Yes. What, what's happened? What's it all about? Eddie, Mr. Gellers, they say he's been shot. Well, who did it? I, I don't know. Billy, you go get details. I must call the office. This is O'Day. Give me the desk. Robbins, city editor. Listen, Mr. Robbins. Good. The front page was dead. I'll send a man and a photographer right over. All right, if you do, I'll quit. No, but I'm right here at the club now. Well, I can get the whole story myself. Oh, good. Good, all right, then. I'll get down to the office just as soon as I can. Huh? No. No, I don't want any ham leg man butting in on this. All right. All right, thank you, Mr. Robbins. I'll let her stay on tonight, and tomorrow you take over. Sure, Mr. Robbins. Say, I'll bust that case wide open in a couple of days. Do you remember what I did to that Benson boob? No, but I remember what he did to you, though. Oh, yeah, well. <clears throat> Who's this gentleman, Owens? Oh, Mr. Landers. He was with me when I found him. I'd say he'd been dead half an hour, shot in the chest. Now that's what I thought. He was warm when we found him. Get in there. The captain wants to see you. Ask him what he said to Geller tonight. He threatened to bump him. That ain't so, captain. Me and Geller had a little disagreement. Say, you was raising the roof with Eddie when I come in. You know, Cap, I think he rubbed out poor Eddie. Don't you try to pin that on me, Silky? Quiet, you. Yeah, Tony. You talk too much. Talking gets a guy in an awful lot of trouble. I guess you can count Tony out of this. He was with me. Take a look at this. Westreth, huh? Uh, know him, Mr. Landers? I met a young chap by that name this evening. I, I don't think it could be the same party. Can't go in there, lady. Found this on the desk, Captain. Dear Mr. Westrup, we are holding your IOU for $5,000. Please arrange to take care of this without delay. Signed, Edward A. Geller. Well, it's pretty easy to see what happened here. Hey, better question Westrop. He was at my table earlier tonight. We missed him later in the evening. Westrop had nothing to do with this. With you, huh? Oh, through dinner. Oh. Any signs of a gun? Found nothing yet, sir. Things look pretty bad, Landers. I'm going home. I have an idea Billy may want to get in touch with me. I'll find Olive and explain. I know, I know, but you're coming. All right, Lieutenant. See you later, Tony. You better, Mr. Day. Yes, thank you, Tony. It was good of you to drive us. And pardon me, will you? Hello, please. Oh, Mr. Randall's residence. Mr. Randall's Japanese houseboy speaking. Who? Who's calling, please? Oh, it's you. <laughs> yeah, she's here. Come on up. Goodbye. Well, I guess I'll be going now. Thanks for the drink. It's quite all right. Tony, who shot Geller? Hmm? I say, who shot Geller? I don't know. I don't know a thing. You're lying. And you know it. Who are you trying to cover? Honestly, Mr. Landers, oh, I don't... quit stalling. Did Silky Samuels do it? 
Did he? You got no right to question me, Mr. Flanders. I'm going. Tony. You better change your mind. Remember Kennedy, the juror? They're burying him tomorrow. Here's my private phone number. Give me a ring sometime. Good night. You talk. Lanny, do you think Tony does know something? I'm sure of it. Oh, I hope so, dear. Oh, Lanny, I'm so frightened for Billy. Oh, incidentally, that was Billy that phoned. He's coming up. Oh, Lanny, dear, you must help us. And of course I will. You know that. But I must ask you to promise me something. Any ideas you have about who or what I am, you must keep to yourself, or I shan't be able to do anything for you. I promise, dear. Mr. Landers. Good evening. How about a drink, young man? Feel you need it? Thank you, Mr. Landers, yes. Well, young fella, suppose you tell us what happened. We know all about the note, so begin with that. I heard that the police were going to question me. Well, I guess I sort of lost my head, and I left the place in a hurry. What for? Did you kill Geller? No, of course not. I'll tell you what happened, Mr. Landers. I owed Gelder some money. Yeah, so I gathered. Well, uh, I went to his office and I lost this money gambling, see? And uh, I wanted to ask him for time. And he refused, huh? Yes, and, well, I guess I got pretty hot and, uh, well, uh, Gelder had the note in his hand and I grabbed it. That started a fight. Then he pulled a gun on me and I took it away from him. Well, then... Uh, Gallo made a jump for me and knocked my hand up in the air and the gun went off. But when I saw he wasn't hurt, I got out. You say he pushed your arm up? Yes. Where were you standing? Well, my back was to the door and he was facing me. Hmm. If we could square this somehow. My advice would be for you to go and tell your story to the police. The police? Lanny! Oh, Ollie, well, you know it's got to be done sooner or later or they'll pick him up. Well, I guess you're right. You will go with him, though, won't you? Surely. I must turn in my story. Now, don't you worry, darling. I'm going to give you the best of it. You know, first impressions usually help. Thank you, Ollie, dear. Here we are. I'll get you a coat right away, Ollie. What did you do with that gun, Mr. Westrup? I told you I threw it in the corner of the office. We found no gun there. But, Captain, doesn't that go to support his story? The man by the name of Smith insists on seeing me. I'm busy. Tell him to wait. Yes. Captain! Captain! I know who killed Eddie Geller. What? Sure. There's a young fella about, uh... That's the fella. That's him. How do you know? I was going to Geller's office to see him. On business, see? Just as I got to the door, I heard loud voices. Like there was a row inside. Then I heard a shot. Right after that, he comes tearing out. Excuse me, Captain. You say you only heard one shot fired? That's what I said. Are you sure of it? Positive. My strip, I'm sorry, but I can't believe your story. It won't wash. This man makes a positive identification and states emphatically there was only one shot. I'm sorry I'll have to hold you. Yes, sir. Take this man downstairs. Detain pending investigation. Okay. Oh, wait. What's your name, you? Smith. Take him along with you. Book him as a material witness. That's a fine way to treat a decent, respectable citizen. Just because I do my duty, you treat me like a common criminal. I'll be about all from you now. Take them away, Ed. Oh, Nolly, Mr. Landers. Yes, I should be glad to. Well, thank you. Oh, Captain, I'd like to ask a favor. Shoot. I'd like to have another look at the uh, Geller place. Mr. Landers, the police will take care of that. No, you must excuse me for not introducing myself. Oh, Federal Bureau of Investigation, eh? K-7, if you wish to check on me. What do you expect to find in Geller's office? Well, if you don't mind, I'd rather show you. Glad to cooperate, Mr. Landers. Thank you. After you, sir. Thank you. Not so bad. Not so worse for a woman. Takes a man to know to handle that right. That would be too bad for you then, Speedy. Yeah.
Now, Captain, with your help, I want to try something. Will you raise your right arm as though you were going to fire at me? They are a bullet. That seems to verify the boy's story. Then we can count on you, Lester. Of course I'll defend Billy. There isn't much I wouldn't do for you, Olive. You know that. Let's both go and see Captain Hall. I knew I could count on you. Here you are, Captain. Have a look at that. Hmm. Yeah, you're right, Landers. The bullet you took out of the wall and the one taken from Geller's body was undoubtedly fired by the same gun. And Schmidt said he only heard one shot before he saw Wester run into the hall. Well, at least part of the boy's story is true. Yeah, but that doesn't clear him by a long way. No, but it should get him out on bail. Oh, uh, I turned uh, Silky Sammy's and Schmidt loose this morning. Why? Orders? Oh. Mr. Owens in your office to see you, Captain. Trust him to grab this case. Go ahead and see him. I gotta be running along anyway. We'll soon find out what Hall's got. Well, good morning, Hall. Good morning, Owens. Good morning, Mr. Day. I suppose you're representing Westrop? Certainly. I'll tell you this. Part of your story is undoubtedly true. There were two shots that... Mm, exactly what I thought. There were two shots fired in that room. Then Billy's free. I'm afraid not, Miss O'Day. There's more evidence against him, you know. Come on, Ollie. I'll have him out in no time. See you later, Paul. Yeah. I've got to go into court now, but you see me this afternoon without fail. Oh, I'll be there. Thank you for all you've done, Mr. Owens. We are very grateful, Lester. Mm -hmm. Take care of this young fellow. Keep him out of mischief. Gosh, Ollie, I'm glad you got Mr. Owens for me. Come, 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 come. No loitering in the streets. Ah, Lanny, is that nice? Well, it didn't take you long to get out of jail. Well, Mr. Owens got bail for me. He's been great. Now I've got to go see old Robbins and give him a high-pressure talk. You know, he wants to take me off this story. I'll be seeing you, darling. Goodbye, Ollie, dear. Goodbye, Lanny. Goodbye. I'd like to have a chat with you. Have you a few moments to spare? Why, yes, Mr. Landers. How about going up to my hotel? <laughs> All right. I was in on the beginning, Mr. Robbins, and this doesn't seem fair. None of the other papers gave you the stuff I did. You said yourself it was good. I know, I know, O'Day. You've been telling me for the last 20 minutes. But this is a man's job, and I'm going to get a man... Man or no man, if I can't cover this assignment better than the half-witted crackpots you got on this rag, excuse me, paper, then I'll eat the presses. All right, it's yours. But if you're a flop, you're through. And don't ever show your face around here again. <laughs> West side, 3801. Pardon me, will you? Hello. Oh, no, sir. Mr. Randa's not home now. Uh, please to tell him who's calling. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Tony. I got to talk to you. Oh, getting smart, huh? Oh, no. Not on the phone. I don't dare. I'll come to your hotel. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, when it gets dark. At 8 o'clock. I'll be here. Goodbye. It's about time for me to see Mr. Owens. All right, keep your chin up. Drop in any time, will you? Thank you. Why do you make me keep repeating over and over again, Owens? Because I want you to be able to tell your story without deviation when I put you on the stand. I don't want you to forget a single point of it. Forget it? How can I forget it? 
Well, that's fine. So much the better. It's a good story. A good story? Do you think that I did kill Galder? That I'm lying? No, of course not. Now, don't you worry, Bill. It's in the bag. I was up to Lander's rooms today. Were you? He seems like a nice chap. Yes, he is. Tony Black called him while I was there. Is that so? What did he want? I don't know, except that uh, he's going to see Mr. Landers tonight. Say, Owens, I guess you know that my father's turned off the bankroll. You'll have to wait till I get a job to pay your fee. <laughs> you let me worry about that. Give my best to Ollie if you happen to see him. Goodbye. I should have known better. What's all this drivel? You made a hero out of Westrop. Hey, Speedy! But Mr. Robbins... Rewrite that and don't spare anything. Oh, he'll take all the color, all the human interest out of my story. You're not a press agent. We want facts. You want facts? All right, here's a fact. Westrop is going to be married tomorrow. Not another paper in town will have it. Yeah, who's going to marry him, you? <laughs> That's a hot one. Yes, I am, Smarty. So what? Now do I write the story? Yeah. You and Mark Twain write your own obituary. What's the row, officer? I heard it upstairs. You live in the hotel, sir? Yes, I do. Did you hear a shot within the last few minutes? No, I didn't. Take a look at him, will you? Any idea what Tony was going to tell you? No, in a general way. I have an idea he knew something about the Geller killing. Somebody made sure he didn't squeal. Did you notice the shiny ring on the barrel of the gun? Yes, I noticed that. There's been a silencer used on that. That accounts for Schmidt hearing only one shot fired. Well, we'll know more about that tomorrow morning after the doc gets the bullet out of Tony. Suppose we go and have a look at the gun now. At the moment, it's in the laboratory being tested for fingerprints. How about first thing in the morning? That's fine. All right, good night, Captain. Good night. Well, you can see for yourself. Yes, you're absolutely right. The same gun killed both men. The bullets are identical. And you can't get away from those fingerprints. I'll have them picked up. I still can't believe it somehow. Do you, William Gordon Westrop, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. And do you, Olive Marie or Dave, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. Place the ring on a finger. I now pronounce you man and wife. Hold it. Well, the hitching don't take long. The other documents you wanted, Judge. Thank you. Good luck to you, Mr. and Mrs. Westrop. Thank you. William Westrop? Yes, why? I'm sorry, sir, but you'll have to come with me. Where and why? Captain Hall issued orders to bring you in. Oh, this is a silly mix-up. My husband's already seen Captain Hall. The captain practically admitted charges would be dismissed. We'd better go and see what he wants to. Tell the captain Westcroft there. Patrolman Riggs just brought Westcroft in, sir. Yes? Yes, sir? You go in, alone. You wanted to see me? Sit down. I suppose you know why you're here. No, not exactly. Why did you kill Geller? I didn't kill him, and you know it. Westrop, I know you did. I can tell you how you did it. 
You had a silencer on that gun. You shot Giller. Then you took the silencer off and fired into the wall. You had us fooled for a time. I told you the truth. Don't make me laugh. What did you kill Tony for? Tony? Tony? I never killed anybody. Sure you did. Tony saw you get Geller. He wanted money. You gave him the works. It's a lie. Sit down. The same gun killed Tony and Geller. The bullet you fired into the wall came out of that same gun. Answer that one. How can I? I don't know. But I never killed anyone. How is it your fingerprints are all over the gun? I? My fingerprints? Well, you're wrong. I'm not guilty. Can't you see we've got you, Westrop? You want to make a confession? Maybe you'll feel better. I won't confess to something I didn't do. Take him down and book him. Billy, darling, what are they trying to do to you? Trying to get a confession out of me. They say I killed Tony Black. Oh, nitwits. It's a wonder you don't try to accuse him of killing the Tsar of Russia. What evidence have you? You'll have to see the captain if you want any information. Excuse me, miss. Come on. Captain Hall, will you please... I know what you want to say, Miss O'Day, but it's no use. You can't go against facts. Well, what are the exact charges, Hall? Murder of Geller and Black, both first degree. I have no other alternative. Oh, I'll never believe it. Not in a thousand years. You can't go against the facts or the evidence. The gun that found at Tony's side was covered with Westrop's fingerprints. Good afternoon, Captain. Is there any truth in what I've heard that you and Billy have been married? Yes, there is. But Lenny, they've arrested Billy for... Yes, I know all about that. We've got to go and see Owens right away. Pardon us, Captain. Oh, why doesn't Lester come? Don't be impatient. He'll be along. Paging me? Ollie, you poor kid. Now, don't you worry. I just saw Billy. He sent you his love. Is he all right? He was fighting mad when I left him. Oh. By the way, Tony Black was killed near your hotel, wasn't he? Yes, he was on his way to see me. Say, wasn't he killed about 9 o'clock? Within the half hour, I should say. Then Billy has an alibi. He was miles away. He went for a drive. That's good. Who was with him? Well, no one. He told me himself. Oh. If you don't mind, I'll be running along. So long, old man. Goodbye. Goodbye, Ollie. Goodbye, darling. No jury in the world will believe Billy's story. You'll have to talk to him. I don't think I understand. Our case is going to be self-defense. Self-defense? Yes, and I can't even build a case on that at present. Do you mean to say you want me to persuade Billy to change his story? To lie? Now, Ollie, you've got to be practical. This may seem frightfully old-fashioned, Lester, but I believe truth prevails. I think Billy would like me to take that stand. Well, of course, if that's the way you feel about it. You'll pardon me for bothering you. But do you know a man by the name of Samuel? Never heard of him. Mister, I'm busy. Very well. Funny, he knows you. Matter of fact, he got a great laugh out of that phony Schmidt alibi. Silky? Phony? Silky? I thought you said you didn't know Samuel. I know him by name. Say, mister, get out of here. Very well, I'll come back someday when you're not so busy. Hello. Hiya. Special, eh? Looks like the cops have got down your pal. Yeah, it looks that way. Keep the change. Thank you. See, so they tell me you had some trouble at Geller's that night. Uh, nothing. Say, if you're trying to pin anything on me, it's no, out. No, 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 no. No, I was just thinking about something. What's on your mind? You know Schmidt, don't you? Yeah. Well, he said that... Anything he says, he's lying. Yeah, that's what I thought. It seemed absurd to me that you'd be there the night he got bumped off. Did he say that? Well, not exactly, but... Uh, well, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll see you around sometime. Talking gets a guy in an awful lot of trouble. I'll say it, Doug. Special, quick.
Leaving? Uh-huh. Why? I'm a neighbor. You attended the uh, Geller trial every day, didn't you? Yes. And afterwards, you were seen at his nightclub. Why did you go there? I was working for Geller. When I found out... Don't lie, son. I've spoken to everybody at Geller's, and no one had ever seen you there before the night he was murdered. Now, why did you go? To kill Geller, that's why. He killed my dad. I thought they'd hang him, and when they let him go, I made up my mind to get him myself. But I didn't do it. No? Then why were you going? I've got a job. Where? In Washington. Find plenty of jobs around here. Stick around. We may want to talk to you. You broke? Just about. This will hold you over until you find a job. Thanks. Where will I return it when I'm working? Oh, you'll see me every now and then. Get busy and find something to do. I've got to go into court tomorrow to defend that young fool, and I still don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't got a case. Curious hobby, this. Oh, that? Yes, for a lawyer. <laughs> when I'm stumped, as I am now, this helps me to think. I stumbled on the idea that won me my first case while I was doing this. It's become a sort of habit. Yes, I heard a fellow in a motion picture say that some people were O-fillers and some doodlers, but he played a horn. <laughs> Well, at any rate, it's better than cutting out paper dolls. Though I suppose you think I'm cracked. Oh, not at all, old man. Cracked? There's a possibility. I'll have him plead insanity. I won't put the boy on the stand. And that's an idea. Well, good luck with your case tomorrow. Thanks. I'll need it. Hey, look, Chief. I told you to take a live wire to crack this one. Oh, boy, will we make the police look sick? Look. I've been trading this guy all day long, see? He's all messed up with a bunch of crooks. I've got no time to listen to serials. Who? Why, Landers, of course. Get out of here. Oh, I know. Get out! All right. you identify this weapon as the gun found near the body? Yes, sir. Your witness. No questions. We concede the identity of the gun. Intoxicated at the time that... I object, Your Honor. The competency of this witness has already been proved. Objection sustained. Is it not a fact that you have served two terms in penitentiary? I object, Your Honor. The witness's past life doesn't enter into this case in any way. Objection sustained. But, Your Honor... Objection sustained. Mr. Owen, you will confine your questions to matters concerning this case. Take this note to Mr. Ames. Well, Master, I don't know. Never Court's mind that. Take it, John. Oh, yes, sir. We'll have to talk fast, Landers. I've got a five-minute recess. Look at this. Owens is sure blowing this case. Wait. What's that bird pull something out of the hat? It'll have to be something better than a rabbit. What do you suppose this is about? I wish I knew. The case is going badly enough as it is. Every time you cross-examine, you'd think you were trying to build a case against me. Oh, Billy, don't talk like that. If it hadn't been for all a young fellow, I'd have walked out on you long ago. You've tied my hands with that story of yours. If you'd only let me enter an insanity plea. Oh, let's not start that again. I'm not crazy, and I didn't kill him. Here comes Ames, and he's got a fellow with him. It's that guy Landers. Are you ready to proceed, Mr. Ames? I most urgently ask Your Honor for a continuance in this case. A continuance? That's most unusual, Mr. Ames. 
I'll have to ask you to state your reasons specifically. My office has no desire to become a party to a miscarriage of justice. The strongest piece of evidence we have is the defendant's fingerprint. We have reason to believe them to be forgeries. Billy, Billy. There's Owen's hat trick. Aha, uh -huh. this is on the level. Owens had never let Ames steal his thunder. Any more such demonstrations and I shall order the court cleared. What proof of you of such an extraordinary claim? With your honor's permission, I'd like to put this man on the stand. You have my permission. Proceed. Your name? Vincent Lambert. Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, not but the truth, so help you God? I do. Be seated, please. Mr. Landers, you're a qualified chemist? Yes, sir. I'm a chemical engineer. Kindly state your qualifications. Columbia graduate. I majored in chemistry at Leipzig and spent two years in the Rockable Foundation Laboratory. I can Mr. Landers' competency in this matter as an expert. Kindly tell the court the result of your analysis, Mr. Landers. Thank you. I have here several greatly enlarged fingerprints of Mr. Westrup the defendant. This one, taken from the gun, marked Exhibit D. These, from the hand of the defendant, which I will call the genuine ones. Various differences in the fingerprints, which I discovered after close observation, convinced me that the gun print was a forgery. In order to prove this to myself, I subjected it to a chemical analysis. You analyze fingerprints? Yes, Your Honor. Very delicate operation, but perfectly possible. Proceed. Reagents applied to the gun print for sodium chloride revealed no trace. In plain words, there was no salt in it. The genuine one, on the other hand, did contain salt. Perhaps it's not generally known, but the impression of fingerprints, or any other part of the human body for that matter, contains salt. This is most astounding. I'll grant a continuance. Prisoners remanded to custody. Court is adjourned. I'll have your analysis checked immediately, Mr. Landers. Thank you. Oh, Lanny, you're a good age. I guess, uh, guess there's not much I can say now. You're not clear yet, Billy, but things do look better for you. Don't you worry, dear. It'll only be for a little while. Sure. That was a great piece of work, but why didn't you let me have it? I'd have staged the most sensational defense the city has ever seen. Because I borrowed the gun from the district attorney, and he insisted that I give him whatever discovery I made. You would. But here's one thing I haven't told you. The murderer forgot to forge a whole handprint. Just how, how does that help us? Because they found a handprint when Tony was killed. Whose was it? Oh, I don't know. I've had a lot of trouble digging up suspects. But I intend to eliminate by comparison. Tomorrow morning, I'll give you some news, Owen. In fact, I'll tell you who killed Geller and Tony Black. Tomorrow morning? <laughs> That'll be great. Oh, boy! Is this something? Come on, boy. What do you suppose that chemist guy's got up his sleeve? Forge prints? Chemical analyzers? Chemical analysis, you dope. All the same, I'll bet the kid's sprung. Then they'll have to find a new stooge for the rope. Who do you suppose it'll be? You tell me. No more cracks like that mug. Is it coffee for two or a coffin for one? All right, I'll go with you. You know, talking gets a guy in an awful lot of trouble. It was a remarkable piece of work, Landis. Thank you, Chief. By the way, I wonder if the department would get me a mirror four feet by eight feet. Well, probably so. What do you want it for? Well, I'll tell you when I have the details worked out. Well, I told you, it's your case. Go ahead.
Never mind looking at those things anymore. Just put them over there on the end of the table. All of them. Too bad you had to meddle in my business, isn't it? Yeah. Now you're going to dispose of me as you did the rest of them, is that it? Quite correct. I know why you killed Kennedy and Tony Black. But why did you kill Geller in the first place? Seems to me you bungled things. That's where you're wrong. I killed Geller to keep him from squealing. Geller kept me in money, and I kept him out of trouble. But this time, he was afraid he was going to burn. He insisted that we were partners, and that I must share any hot seat he might draw. He was beginning to get in my way. I don't allow people to get in my way. It was easy. Remember when Peppy was singing and the place was in darkness? Yes, I figured that. Tony, of course, was my alibi. He was beginning to weaken. So you eliminated him? Yes, the rat. One more question. Do you mind? Why did you frame young Weston? Because he crossed me in another way. I don't have to tell you. Oh. Ollie, huh? Write your own story on that, Mr. Landers. You're leaving. Goodbye. <laughs> Never occurred to you that it's impossible to obtain a whole handprint from a corrugated gun handle, did it? But those prints that... Oh, those. I, I bought those from a palmer. Thanks, folks. Hold it for another. Holy mackerel! Who broke that mirror? Seven years bad luck. Seven years your grandmother. It's life. Congratulations, my boy. Thank you. It was a darn fine job. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, Lanny, did you know it was Owens all the time? No. It was when I discovered the forgery of a fingerprint that I got the idea. Well, how could that tell you? Only a person skilled in etching or engraving could forge a fingerprint. And Owens had that skill. Simple, isn't it? Oh, darling, I want to thank you, and I don't have the words. You know, the DA is getting Billy's release right now. Hello, Prius. Please be a little more quiet, Mr. Lander. The people in the hotel that want to sleep. Oh, please excuse uh, Mr. Anders. Uh, very sorry. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> 